Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar, uh, How to Stream Security, Streamline Security and DLP Policy Management with McAfee and AWS. When you all joined today, uh, you joined either by phone call or by computer audio. Uh, if for any reason you want to change that, uh, look to your right in your control panel, uh, and you'll be able to change that. In addition, uh, in your control panel as well, there is a section for questions that will allow you to engage with the speakers and the panel that you have today. Uh, so you can make uh, your questions there. And then as we have time for Q&A, uh, we'll be able to address those questions. So again, thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Trey Vance, and I'm a senior solutions architect working in public sector for AWS. And with me today, I have Denon Monks, who's a systems engineering manager with McAfee, and Maka Guerrero, a senior IT security analyst with Pacific Dental. And so they're going to uh, join us in the conversation uh, in just a little while. I'm actually going to uh, remind everyone that uh, this is being recorded, and so there will be an opportunity later. There will be an email that will be sent out uh, with a link to this recording. And again, thank you for being here. So let's get started with security. So let's do this. Let me give you some background uh, on the AWS perspective uh, here. So uh, what I'm here to talk to you today, uh, today about is uh, security, identity, and compliance, three separate but very important things. And at AWS, uh, security is job zero. And what that means for us is that you may be familiar with a, a model of people and process, systems, network. And all of those things are uh, accomplishable in the cloud. So you're able to use things such as identity and access management, uh, security groups, and AWS services as the foundational building blocks for uh, your journey into the cloud. Uh, we do offer uh, prescriptive guidance uh, for customers uh, to implement uh, security best practices. And uh, we have our famous shared security uh, model. Uh, so what is that model? That model simply means that AWS is responsible for the security in the cloud and the customer is responsible, oh, excuse me, uh, actually, mm, uh, the AWS is responsible for the security of the cloud, meaning the global endpoints, the, uh, the facilities themselves, and the customer is responsible for the security in the cloud. That means that they're responsible for their guest operating systems, the security groups, the ways that their data is accessed. And we do have uh, some models around that security. We have a security white paper, uh, we have quick starts, a number of elements to allow you to get started. Uh, and we have uh, partners that we work with uh, that have specific tools uh, and, and methods of managing security. And I think that that's what you're gonna hear today uh, from the McAfee team and, and as well from the customer uh, Pacific Dental. You're gonna hear what their story is, what their journeys were and, and how they came to the cloud. Uh, every organization is, is different, uh, but you can inherit a number of security and compliance controls from uh, the cloud service platform, AWS, in, in this case. Uh, and what that means is that you can build a lot faster. You can accelerate that journey. Uh, I work in the public sector group, and inside of public sector, we have a lot of regulated industries uh, that take advantage of the independent third-party attestation of the AWS cloud. Uh, that allows our customers to move into the cloud very quickly to be able to scale up or scale down to meet the needs of their mission or their organization. And you'll hear a lot about what that journey uh, is from our customers. So what I'd like to do at this point is I'm going to turn things over to Denon and he's going to take it from here. Excellent, thank you, Trey, appreciate that. My name is Denon Monks, I'm a systems engineering manager with McAfee. And before I get too much into the uh, capabilities and use cases of the Envision Cloud Platform, take a quick second to level set on the importance of why, uh, why a tool like this exists. 
I think for most of the folks on the webinar, these, these numbers aren't going to be surprising by any means. Just about every company we're working with is, is moving either existing workloads out to the cloud, doing a lift and shift, potentially even retooling with PaaS and IaaS, and then across a lot of their normal applications uh, moving out to SaaS environments. The number on the right, though, um, I don't even know if I necessarily believe. I'd say the other 17% probably are afraid to admit it or just don't know. In some form or another, a company's going to have data out there in the cloud that they wouldn't want either to be exposed or um, shared with potential competitors or uh, nefarious folks. One of the major things that we focus on when we're developing this product and, and to kind of double click on what Trey was talking about with the shared responsibility model is what you'll notice in the green here, what's the, what part of the, the customer's responsibility versus the service provider. Essentially, if it's in green, we want Envision Cloud to be able to help you with it. And it really started at the top right there around data classification and SaaS environments. Really, the extension of DLP into the cloud was a major piece of, um, of expanding people's existing security portfolio out into those cloud environments, not only from a north-south upload and download perspective, but also east-west, sharing between other organizations through shared links collaboration, cloud-to-cloud -cloud traffic uh, of syncing of different repositories. And as you move from right to the left, you don't get to shed any of those responsibilities. We add in things like UBBA threat protection, access control, configuration audit, um, and really across this entire board gives you a, a very wide breadth across all of these different environments, but also uh, a centralized point for, for policy and a centralized point for remediation as well. So uh, in one interesting thing that we've kind of added here as well is uh, on the application level control and, and the uh, network control, the idea of C CPSM or a Cloud Security Posture Manager, CSPM, uh, really kind of was born in the environment of, of AWS, for example. The idea of being able to check your environment to get CIS level one, level two controls. But as a security platform, it also makes a lot of sense in the SaaS environment. Let's say for Office 365, do your global admin accounts have uh, multi-factor authentication, do your shared links expire after 72 hours? So we maniacally look at this responsibility model in developing, uh, you know, future use cases. For the yeah, just to well. interject real quick, uh, the IAS, the PaaS, the SaaS, all the data classification stuff and the accountability is really uh, something that is a foundation to a checkbox, right? Whether you're in the financial sector or the health sector. So, I mean, real quick before you jump to the next slide, how do you guys you know, you guys marked all the checkboxes on data uh, classification and accountability. How did you guys dig into something like that? I mean, how, did you collaborate with a lot of different industries or what yeah, was Yeah, well, uh, that's a really interesting question, actually. So um, a lot of the product managers and the engineers uh, that, that moved over to the Ambition Cloud product had a, a lot of background in different forms of data protection, right. not just data loss prevention in the sense of contextual analysis, but overall access control and whatnot. But one of the ways that Envision Cloud really got its, its feet on the ground was through shadow IT visibility. And through years and years and years of analysis of Fortune 500 companies' egress data, we were able to really get a good sense of where data is going and how it's being used in the cloud. And then based on that, was then able to develop the correct controls to around that data. Nice. So moving forward, This slide is probably one of my favorite in terms of giving you an overall picture of the vision of the product uh, across all these different environments, whether it's shadow, your own SaaS applications, IaaS, or even custom applications that you've lifted and shifted. We want to provide this common set of security services. Data loss prevention being one of the first that most people come to come to the, the, the table with us about, but very quickly moving into activity monitoring, using that activity monitoring to start to bubble up anomalous behavior versus normal behavior and using that in our threat protection uh, capabilities including UEBA, uh, you can see access control is another big one. As you, as companies are shifting their data boundaries out from their existing network boundary out to the SaaS, PaaS, and IaaS environments, they are ensuring in some level or expecting someone or other that their data is going to be reside and be used in those environments. But that data boundary is no longer within their control behind the network. As such, the idea of regulating what type of devices and where people are connecting from is a big piece of what a, an Envision Cloud security platform can, can accomplish. And as well, compliance and risk management, uh, I talked a little bit about that, uh, not only in the IS environment, but some of the shift out to SaaS as well. Right. It seems like you guys got a robust portfolio and it's just, it seems like you're marking all the check boxes, but Denon, tell us what's next for Mac. It's funny you should ask that, Monica. I'd be happy to. All right. I'd say probably the most interesting one is uh, this, the other side of the coin when you when you talk about 
checking and condition-based policy versus using that data and remediation. Um, probably the one that I'd like to, to mention today would be our end user remediation portal for DLP. A lot of what vendors out there, their DLP engines, a lot of that's become table stakes, regular expressions, data identifiers. There's obviously some vendors like ourselves that's come in more advanced use cases around fingerprinting of data, but that's one side of the coin. The other side is using that data, remediation. Can I quarantine that data? Can I delete that data? Can I put the onus of the data back on the data owner? And through our end user remediation portal, we're able to actually notify the user of sensitive data that they've either shared or uploaded, give them a portal to remediate themselves, and from there, take that onus off the InfoSec and put it back on the data owner. So when your information security team's logging into the tool to review incidents, all those ones that the end users resolve themselves are already accounted for, and they can focus on ones that are either high priority or haven't been accounted for. So it sounds like you're doing like a three-way handshake where you're taking it from the enterprise perspective, the security perspective, but also leveraging the end user to really take control of their own data because we can't be everywhere at once. So we're empowering, we're making the users aware, and that's what makes it a three, 360 win for everybody. Yeah, yeah, it's even nice. a better way of saying it. Yeah. Huh. So moving on, uh, these are the top seven cloud security use cases our customers come to us with. Um, you know, the number two and number three really focus around data loss prevention, but not again, not just on north south, but also east west. Um, data syncing between clouds, applications connecting and accessing data through uh, some type of OAuth token, uh, potentially shared links or collaboration. This is where a CASB can be really privy to. to to data that otherwise existing investments wouldn't be able to. And then as well, on number seven, you can see down there, we're um, collapsing a lot of those capabilities of the CSPM type tool into our overall Envision Cloud Security platform, but as well leveraging that with some of those other pieces. So for example, if a company wanted to ensure that all their, their S3 buckets were not publicly readable, that's a very easy check and response from a policy procedure. But there are gonna be valid use cases where people have to keep those buckets publicly readable. In those scenarios, as a response to that check, we can automatically kick up a DLP scan. So yes, it's public readable, but we can help ensure that company doesn't keep sensitive data out there um, on, a, on a public readable bucket. You know, I think everybody out there would appreciate, I mean, what's, uh, I mean, you have seven check marks right here. I mean, for me, I'm just gonna give my perspective of what my top one is. Yeah, um, please. Doing, you know, operational wise security every day to day. I think the security misconfiguration is, is one of the top. I think this is a no such order for just me in particular, I, they're all very, very, very important. But one of the biggest ones is the security misconfiguration because our dev is just spinning up you know, new buckets and then they're just not necessarily savvy to the check mark of the security portion. So are you able to speak on that a little bit more? To Absolutely. Yeah. So this started as sort of a classic polling type check where based on different benchmarks, CIS level one, level two, PCI, HIPAA, we're gonna go out and enumerate all the resources in that environment yeah. and check against policy for them. Initially, it happened on a once every 24 hour check. We've moved that up into an every five minute check. So for example, if someone opens SSH to an, a workload, we can identify that and close it back down within a five minute window. However, in some scenarios, even a five minute window is unacceptable, that exposure window. So you'll see a major push in our product to what we call shift left. And that's gonna start with initially of scanning of cloud formation templates. So we'll, instead of checking after the resource has been spun up, we'll check the formation template on which those resources are built and keep that up to speed. Even further so, you'll see us have add more and more webhooks into the overall dev process, including things like Jenkins. So during actual builds, they'll get those checks pulled against the Ambition Cloud platform to ensure that you know they meet certain security configurations. So they're starting out the right way. Yeah, That's good. From the get-go. Right on. The last one here, a, a quick tout of our capabilities within the market. So um, the Envision Cloud platform is uh, what we call the triple crown winner across IDC, Forrester, and Gartner, two years running. But I think probably my my, my favorite um, accolade here is, is the Gartner Peer Insights. For two years running, we've been far and away the, the customer choice uh, by a, a margin of, of you know three to one in terms of overall reviews and a scoring there. So that's, One of those reviews are mine, just to let everybody know out there. And they're worth reading. They're not all, they are. They're all, not, they're not all nice. They're, they're, they're by, written by real customers, real peers. Um, and they will give you a really good understanding of not only how the product works, how it gets operationalized, and the whole team that supports that product. They're not biased, we promise. Go out there and read it. Check it out. Great. Pass it to you, Maka. All right. Sounds good. Well, hello, everyone out there. My uh, name is Maka Guerrero, Senior IT Security Analyst for Pacific Dental. Uh, we basically are one of the, we, we consider ourselves to be the largest dental organization in North America. Uh, so we have 750 dental offices across the nation. 
We're growing fast. We're do, we're our ambition and what we've been able to do is open up 100 offices every year, ongoing every year from here on out. I'm sure we'll next year we'll go shoot for 150 to 200. Um, so needless to say, we're at a hyper growth and we don't see that tapering off anytime soon. Mm -hmm. We have high ambitions, high goals. Well, with, what comes with that is a shift in the mentality and we are going to have to adopt our journey into the cloud, which is for us, AWS became the logical way to go. Um, we looked at other cloud platforms and we chose AWS because we choose, we think that they have the most mature platform mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to cloud. And also uh, they fit our needs. And uh, we, you don't certainly, you don't go there necessarily for the cost. You go there for the speed and the agility and the security uh, aspects that encompass that are very challenging for any enterprise. And I think that's what makes a lot of people hes hesitant because they want to control their own hardware. They want to have their, their cage, if you will, and, you know, make that excuse to either fly to their data center, wherever that may be, so they can get a quick vacay, maybe in Vegas. I don't know, but neither here nor there. I'm not here to judge. I'm just here to work. But one of the things is we're, we're fast, you know, we're a fast growing private companies and we're very, very proud of that. Um, you know, we have uh, a mantra and one of those is that we believe that patients pay our salaries. So the biggest uh, thing that we want to focus on is our patient experience and our owner doctor experience, because at the end of the day, we are a platform and we want dentists to focus on dentistry. Uh, it's unfortunate that when dentists go to school for the amount of time that they do, which is um, to me more than a lawyer, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're basically, you're not getting a business degree with that. And that's going to be part of what that's you need to do. Point. Yeah. And that's the challenging aspect. So us at Pacific Dental Services, we provide that platform for them to just focus on dentistry and they don't necessarily have to worry about the business aspect. We'll do that for them. So um, with that said, going back to where we're, we were going that gives us a big playground to work with. And, you know, the traditional perimeter has evolved, right? So this is, you know, hackers in the 21st century, they can take their pick on which way to attack us. So from a security standpoint, we're basically spinning plates and we don't want to let any one of them fall. So we have our employees, our privilege users, our contractors, our partners, our customers. We also have those SaaS platforms, those PaaS, those IASs. And then the big thing is, is that, you know, it's data everywhere and the experience gets enhanced but the security perspective goes down so that's why we adopted the share model and while we were doing our proof of concepts uh, going with competitors and we chose obviously sky have and vision mcafee was the the wise choice because we wanted to work from the outside in you know mm -hmm. we didn't necessarily have those granular controls to understand where our data sets necessarily were especially uh, going off legacy systems so I wanted to kind of leverage with you on that and see yeah, I mean, you know, where the, your standpoint is on that. The data sets is interesting. I remember in a previous conversation, you mentioned to me that um, you know, your patients pay your salary, but the, the dentists are your customers. Correct. And as such, they don't, you know, they go to school for dentistry for eight, 12 years. I'm not oh, sure exactly. Yeah. I mean, it depends if they're going for a, you know, their general practice or they're going for a specialty, like, you know, orthodontist or something like that. Right. Right. So again, they're going to walk away with that one without a business degree by any means, but they've got to go run a successful business. Right. Um, those data sets, how are you leveraging them to give uh, across all these different dentists, some type of business insights that they can leverage, I mean, through maybe some type of Right, because we do have the check boxes to meet, just like every other business that's usually out there. Uh, PCI, especially for us, being in the dental industry, we have HIPAA. We have, you know, all the things that we're gearing up towards. We're going, you know, our ambition is to go towards high trust, and that's like the gold star model amongst healthcare. Mm -hmm. You know, so when when it comes to that, we needed a solution that we can bring awareness to our doctors with, and we can leverage those data sets to say, hey, you know what, this social security shouldn't be in the cloud. And if it is, well, then we need to meet these check marks. Right. And that's why we're, you know, everybody's talking about the DevSecOps model that's out there. And this kind of encompasses that. This solution, when you incorporate it into your, you know, your portfolio, you're going to get a better security posture because essentially you're bringing all the stakeholders to the table. Whether you whether they want to or not, you know, yes, you, yes. you you put it in, it's out of the box, and you have conclusive data sets that you can basically leverage over and say, look, maybe we shouldn't be doing that, and it's conclusive, and we go in, we remediate it, and, and an exponential rate too. It's it's basically where we're working with our partners, um, and then our customers being the owner doctors mm -hmm. to make them aware, so that way, 
we have future remediation in place because they're empowered to do the right thing to know what data sets are, are there and, what, and what's not you know what's good and what's bad so empowered's a great word because it you know it implies that they get to accelerate their business yeah exactly securely exactly and in that at the end of the day comes down to a foundational trust from a customer perspective not only within our organization but outside our organization when it comes to our brand Yes, our plat our platform, and that's what I think anybody, any business out there, whether you're financial sector, you know, construction, whatever it is, your brand is going to be your gold star label to say, you know what, I trust that band brand because of X, Y, and Z, whether or not the price is competitive. So you know, we can be more expensive, but the customer experience, the brand experience, the knowing that you have that that trust from to say, you know what, I know my my social security is secure, I know my payment systems are secure. Because we're leveraging, you know, gold star solutions, uh, all star, world class solutions like Envision McAfee. But again, cloud native. So giving those dentists the ability to take those social security numbers, those credit card numbers, securely over mobile devices, for example, right? Have them be quick and, and painless transactions. Yeah, it's it's a it's a sound operation, and it gives us that speed and agility that customers want nowadays. It's 21st yeah. century, so. Now we have, I and mean, we're we're operational in California, and there's going to be the GDPR for those of you that may not be familiar with that. It's basically where a customer uh, or a patient can come up and say, "I want to know all my patient history that I've done," and that makes another challenge for California people operating in California, especially in the healthcare industry, on how we can you know retain that data, but also not leak that data. And that's the challenge that we have here in California, especially. So, you know, that's coming up right around the corner. And that's another shared model that we all do is 360 win between Amazon, Envision, and Pacific Dental. We all have, we all encompass that that need, that not to only that demand, but that also that check mark from a compliance a perspective point. to say we have to have this. And also, you know, our patients are uh, you know, we want to abide by the law and we, we want to give them the transparency they deserve. Excellent. So, so moving forward to the next slide, um, that kind of touches this, this slide pretty much touches in a basic way, you know, Envision Cloud plus our security framework equals that shared responsibility that we're able to uncover across the board. And that's really, really the biggest reason why we went with Envision is because we're able to leverage all those data sets uh, and also, we, we are able, from a customer perspective, from Envision, I'm able to reach out to Denon and say, hey, you know what, we're coming across this challenge. Can we, you know, maybe work on some, you know, a new tile to get in this new data set? <laughs> and we have a good rapport enough to do it. And it just wouldn't j wouldn't be just us, specifically. That would be anybody in the industry, yeah. you know? That's, that's the greatest thing about Envision is that you guys listen, you know, you interpret and you apply it. And that's uh, the biggest win for us. So well, that the, the resources tile. So there's um, we're, we're doing configuration audit, right? To go ahead and apply policy checks against all your different network resources, compute resources, VPCs, whatever it may be. Right. We've got to enumerate all those resources. Initially, we we hid that, but there was no point to show that. But the companies like Pacific Dental, they said, you know, that could be valuable to other stakeholders. Yet, yes, the Envision Cloud is really the main tools for a security team, but if, if other application owners or DevOps can derive value from it, then so be it. So we expose that resource view and we have DevOps admins that can look for a VPC ID in a, in a, in a 13 second you know, search yeah. through the tool. Now we keep them our back down to just that one tile and maybe a little activity monitoring, but sure they derive value on a day-to-day -day basis. Security team derives a bunch of value on top of that, including DLP, activity monitoring, configuration audit, but it's uh, you know, it's a it's a win win. It's kind of a come to the table approach. And that's what's great about it is that uh, you know, you have your C level executives that from an operational perspective, I'm in the weeds all day. So I have to basically present to them because they see they get the visibility they need and it's highly digestible. But mm -hmm. the tile page gives them a direct concept of what's happening in their environment, what resources they need to apply to that yeah. environment, and how they need to meet all the check marks to meet the compliance rating. So it's it's a it's you know encompasses that that full win and where your C levels are able to digest it very well and and quickly too just as quick as you're you know as we're spinning up resources as quick as they're able to say look we have and that's why I believe the Envision require you know it encompasses the title to say we have the vision to move forward with adopting the cloud and where we're going to go in the future because it's basically we, we want to have we're we're going towards a full hybrid environment but leveraging the cloud a lot more and that's just yeah. the 21st century eventually you will end up in the cloud 
it just it, it's happening. It's it's fun to be uh, two of the two of the closest runners to catching up to the speed and scale. Yeah, at which AWS is going to let businesses run. Yeah, it you is. Know, moving forward, it's it, it's an exciting time. So, um, we'll move forward to the next slide here, and I mean this is this basically encompasses pretty much what we were talking about with the web gateway, and you know for us in security. Shadow IT is a big deal, especially yeah. even in the healthcare industry. You're looking, you're, you know, you're more exposed from the inside out, as I say, I from not from the outside in. We Envision provides great perimeter controls, and but from the inside perspective, I'm still able to get shadow IT anomalies that take place. So if some user ends up getting their password hacked, I still have the you know superhuman anomaly that takes place where mm -hmm. I get a quick snapshot of hey wait a second your credentials are leaked because it may not be to the data part yet you know it could be from the user standpoint and they, they clicked on some link at wherever at the hotel that they were traveling at and now you know the password's leaked yeah. right and um we we can go and remediate that pretty quickly actually very quickly shorter than five minutes to say hey you know what we're going to shut down your account and we're going to change your password and we'll be online with them within one to two minutes uh, if you know, because we have these these tiles that basically give context to that, we're able to see torrent activity. We're able to see users upload greater data than whatever we want to set it to. So, say for instance, they upload two gigs or they download two gigs, we can set those granular controls yeah. to know what users doing what activity and get a baseline on that too, because that's important. Um, because certain users in, in certain areas, marketing is not going to act the same as human resources. No, definitely. human resources are going to act the same at at uh, Operationally, you know, so those type of activities give us concepts and uh, actual data value to say that's an anomaly, and we know it's not, you know, false positive overload. Yeah. That's the biggest deal is that everybody's kind of looking at this, maybe a skeptic out there, and I hope to prove you wrong. Get get out to Envision and you know give them a give them a chance because all they need is one, and you're going to be convinced. I promise you that. So. Uh, Real-time configuration management, obviously visibility to your DLP, encryption, data at rest, data in motion. That's important to us. That's yeah. important. That should be important to everybody. Um, you know, don't be don't be Facebook. So, you know, saying. <laughs> Anyways, too soon? No, not too soon. All right. So, um, with that said, it's been a pleasure speaking to all of you out there. Uh, now we'll open it up, I guess, for some Q and A. Yeah, excellent. Excited to hear what you guys have out there. Yeah, so actually, uh, this is Trey, jumping back in. Uh, there are quite a few questions out there, so I hope you guys are ready. Uh, first question uh, that's coming in, it's okay. I think you guys have some, some good answers, and it was a great uh, topic that you were, were talking well, about. Uh, how do you, yeah, so the, the first one, how do you determine insider threats or compromised accounts? I'll, uh, I'll take this one. So um, we have uh, an incident. If you ever get a chance to see it, it's well, basically do this. Explain how you use our tool, but also explain if you, if you, with, within certain parameters how you, as, an, as your own team, maybe, you know, it's for product agnostic. I'm sure some of the people out there would be interested to know how. how More integration wise. Yeah, and how PDS does it, right? How maybe. Without giving any secret sauce to you. Yeah, no, I can't give any secret sauce. So um, I basically, we, we do have Okta. We leverage Okta and Envision. Envision has a great portfolio with integrations. So we have next-gen firewalls that we use. Um, I've already revealed a little bit of the secret sauce with the Okta integration. So we are able to essentially have those uh, superhuman anomalies take place where we get an alert. And it's directly on our tile. And we have what we call, what what's, most people I think have out there is, uh, security operations dashboard. It kind of gives those alerts that come in, and that's one of our highest ones. Uh, the industry, security industry, is talking a lot about UEBA, mm -hmm. um, user behavior analytics, right? User event behavior analytics. So whether you have it in your seam or if you just have it directly on your Caspi, uh, you know, we get that alert, and we're monitoring traffic all day to see not just from. So we have a single pane of glass that we can use. So it's it's couple of different methodologies. You can either leverage it with your SIM to kind of get those in, that, that intake, or you can go directly out of the CASB with Envision um, once you make your integrations with your AD and your whatever you know authorization sign, uh, single sign-on that you're using, and create those alerts to say, hey, my user is here in Irvine next to me. Uh, they're not in Russia. 
you know, so they're not logging at the same time. So those ano anomalies is going to trigger an alert and we can, we can categorize them to say one through 10. So if that person happens to be on a business trip, we're going to know about that because we're essentially going to leverage in the integration piece with their uh, email to say they've been, you know, they're going out of town. So for us, we actually have it integrated with a lot of other platforms to say, okay, I know this person's out of the office here at this location and we actually can geo geolocate their endpoint. Um, we can also do a host checker to recognize that that is our endpoint that's being used. So that's another thing that we do um, to check. So we kind of do a bit of a four-way to five-way handshake to make sure that this is a not a false positive. And also, if someone is brute forcing, we can lock down the account within a certain amount. I can't give the secret sauce on that, but a certain amount of attempts mm -hmm. and to where they actually have to contact us. And on top of that, Please believe we are putting in multi-factor authentication for anybody that wants to try and log into the cloud, and uh, we get those Must. we get those robust logs all day. So we make sure that they're not messing around the way they shouldn't be. So I hope that answers your question out there. Great. Yeah. Thank you. So the next uh, question is also along the topic of uh, DLP, and is it the question is is policy or consistent across multiple cloud services. So I'm imagining for some reason someone using th something other than AWS, uh, maybe on-prem or another cloud provider, are the policies that you create consistent? Short answer is yes. So when you can define a policy once and apply it to all the different cloud services you've integrated with, whether it's an S3 bucket, Exchange Online, Box, Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, whatever it may be, as well, if you're leveraging some of the McAfee uh, DLP suite, you can leverage your existing EPO server to apply DLP consistently across endpoint, network, and cloud, and then also centralize all your incidents there. All right. The next question, also along those same lines, uh, it's pretty popular, DLP. Uh, are, the organization uh, that this question is coming from is in manufacturing, and they have intellectual property. So can you kind of describe how you could find intellectual property within the DLP solution? Can we can we co-sign this one? Sure. I Because I, we have sure. intellectual property too. And uh, one of the things that we use to classify that, uh, one of the things that we touched on earlier was empowering the user to say, you know, this is uh, our intellectual property. Most of that is going to come from the dev environment. So we, you know, one of the things is having a, you know, privileged access management, you know, identified. You know, you have to identify your user set. You have to know your environment. And once you identify that environment, you're able to get the, those users to basically, like I said before, empower them to say, you know, this we, you're under contract. We know that, you know, this policy is applied, and we're going to mark this down as our intellectual property, and we can classify that granularly in Envision. So with that, I'll kind of like. Pass the torch over. Sure, and I can kind of talk to the, to the tech side of it. Um, you know, if you're looking for intellectual property, it's pretty hard to depend on keywords, regular expressions. Sure, you could look for project code names, you could look for the word confidential, but that's that it's not necessarily going to be a high fidelity hit all the time. We're looking for certain, you know, regular expressions. Uh, Envision Cloud has two advanced DLP checking capabilities around structured and unstructured fingerprints. This allows you to ingest known sensitive data sets within your premise, and then that essentially creates secure hashes of that data. Those hashes get uploaded to the Envision Cloud Platform, and as the, the platform is analyzing data across all those different cloud services, it's computing hashes of the data and comparing the hashes. It's a really good way to look for account records specific to an environment, you know, first name, last name, and an account number, but then on the unstructured side, things like forms, pictures, uh, letterheads, network diagrams, um, all of those can be ingested, create multiple overlapping hashes, and go look for for certain exposure levels of that specific type of data. Works really well for for intellectual property. Okay, great. Uh, so this question, I would classify this, and I actually get this one a lot myself, uh, around shadow IT. Uh, if I have a developer or a, a business owner, someone in the line of business, and they decide that they want an AWS account and they open with a credit card. Uh, that is a very common problem. So how, how do we prevent that? Can I, can I take, can I start this one? Hit, hit this one off, man. Well, Let's go. 
you just go to the you just go to your uh, your accounting department and ask for all the uh, expenses where it says AWS, right? <laughs> I mean, that's, in all seriousness, that's that is how people have yeah. done it up until recently. It's kind of scary. Um, so there are certain web gateways that have the capability of pulling out the cookie during an SSL decrypted session. MacView Web Gateway is one of those. And what can happen is, um, not to get too into the weeds here, but uh, AWS has a different URL for logging in to an environment. So you can, if you're being savvy here, you can decrypt just the session during the login portion, pull out that cookie, and, and then Envision Cloud captures that. And we can correlate data across AWS, either in personal accounts, sanctioned accounts. You can even get into workflows to either block those personal accounts or even try to wrangle them into a managed state. Um, through API integration and plugging the configuration audit. So uh, the, the short answer there is yes, very doable. Um, you know, um, professional, professional. See if your existing web gateway or, or next generation firewall has some of those capabilities. If not, we can definitely help you with it. Yeah. I would, I would comment on that, but I'm not going to touch that. He hit that. He hit it right out of the park on that. <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah, I think I think so as well. And you know, coming from AWS and Understanding that that's a very common problem. I think that you have a very good solution to that problem. Um, so moving on to, there, there are quite a few questions here. So uh, I think you guys are in for a treat. Uh, so the next one is around uh, what I would call configuration management, uh, a very agile shop that's moving into uh, DevOps. Like, can you talk about uh, the scans of the cloud formation, something that you mentioned earlier, uh, and how is that working, kind of working with a traditional IT shop? Sure. So I can um, I can probably answer this, and then Maka can probably uh, add to it with some actual real-life examples of, of working between DevOps and security. Yeah. The idea is, um, classically, as security professionals, we were able to be gatekeepers. right? If someone didn't patch their box, we could say, oh, too bad, we're not going to cable it in. You've got no access. Or, or I'm not going to open up that port. Uh, the, the, the paradigm shifted. Uh, you know, if we don't provide value as security professionals um, and enablement, then they, they'll just go around us and they have the technical capabilities to do that now. They don't, they don't need us anymore in those cases. So there was the idea of a, um, you know, come to the table approach, right, that I mentioned before with a resource view and, and getting them also to derive value from the platform. But as well, when it, when it comes to a shift left idea of getting those checks in before the resource comes up, the, the easiest way to start that is to ensure that your company is using CloudFormation templates. You should probably touch on that, but CloudFormation templates are essentially um, configuration templates that ensure any new resource that gets spun up, whether it's compute, network, you know, um, storage, has to have a certain set of parameters. And so if you're constantly monitoring that configuration template, it's pretty much impossible to get around that. Now, if someone's a total admin and they can avoid using CloudFormation template, that's where you can go even further and actually build those checks into the, the build process and essentially make webhook calls out to the Ambition platform, uh, which is something that uh, you, know, you can start to, to test pretty much uh, in the next quarter or so. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. I, and, and for us, I mean, operationally right now, what, the way we integrate with Dev is, is to basically say, look, we're not here to stand in your way. We're just here to enable you to make sure everything's secure. So we have a good, we have a good rapport with our Dev, but it, you know, we believe in segmentation of duties. And, um, we actually go at it from that perspective. So whenever we come to the table, whenever a resource needs to get spun up or a resource does get spun up, because essentially we're at, like we said, a hyper growth and we can't control necessarily, it's like we can't control what they do. So we don't try to control what they do. We basically control what they do. So, uh, you know, like well, when they do it. And essentially that's what we're, that's the approach that we've had to take so, you know, so far, right? Because essentially, um, like you said, they, they have the technical capability of doing something. So we're not there to stand in their way. We're just there to watch their back. And I always go back to, you know, for anybody out there, non-technical, right, that may be operational or a decision maker out there, um, consider it like the blind side. You know, we're just there to protect the quarterback. And that's why we basically say, look, we're going to hear, we're, we're protecting your blind side. Great, Great moving, by the way. Yeah. But that's it. That's basically it. Right. I mean, you know, Envision and, and uh, in the, cause football season's here now. So, so Envision and, you know, AWS are, you know, they're the NFL, right? They're like, they're, they're the big stadium, they're playing field and all that. And then we're, you know, the players that are in there and essentially, you know, they're inside the game and they've got to spin up resources to make it, make it all happen. Right. So the audience can enjoy the show. 
and essentially we can all protect it, right? So we're the security going around, making sure everybody's safe and watching sound. Watching that blind side. And watching that blind side. Best believe it. Otherwise, it's our quarterback. That's a great way to explain it. It's high level. I heard yeah. that here first, AWS. All right. Can't steal that. That's right. Guys, yeah, and, and just to, just yeah, to add are. on to that, that conversation about uh, things like cloud formation, right? Like cloud formation offers you uh, great guardrails in building your environment and setting up exactly the resources that you need. But Envision, uh, Denon, you can probably speak to this as well, is going to let you know when things are done outside of that process too. So you have all that visibility uh, into the, the super admin that you gave the example of, right? Like you have visibility into the super admin invoking those uh, privileges, and then you can actually um, you know, take that further. Yeah, spot on, Trey. So kind of uh, shifting to that, there's a question around uh, insider threat. So could you kind of take us through uh, the Envision solution on uh, managing or, or reducing the insider threat? Yeah, I'll touch on this and then you can hit it out of the park. Um, and basically for us every day, that's what keeps me up at night, right? There's the dev that becomes disgruntled and says, you know what, I'm gonna rip and strip PDS to shreds. Um, you know, that's the type of thing that every security person stays up at night. You lose sleep over that stuff because essentially it's like, you know, how did you not see this coming? Or, you know, I mean, you, you build up a rapport and a trust at the end of the day, but it, you know, at, that sometimes people can just go rogue. It happens. So uh, for me, really what I want to do is not only just build a rapport, but also, you know, because the, the trust factor and the, and the interaction is an, an important, the human factor of there, but the technical capability going back to the Envision is the, the, the baseline that we've already established with the users, right? So we have connections to um, our change management control. Uh, we have other things that are going on in the environment. What's, what's, what needs to be spun up for this resource, et cetera, right? So we're forecasting constantly and doing that forecasting, we're already getting the technical dependencies around that. And so we're gonna know if something's off so we can kind of like configure those to, uh, to basically have a baseline of where they're gonna go, where they've been in the platform mm -hmm. and, and the service. And that way, if they shift off, we're gonna get an alert about that. And I can get, I get it to where I get it on my mobile and I'm able to log in and what's going on and say, hey, is, is, there, is there a resource that's down or did something happen? And so I'm able to tie it into my change control and see, oh, we're doing this now, so we're gonna tune out the noise. Or, hey, this wasn't in change control, what is this? And we, we get the technical resource, uh, the stakeholders aligned, and then you know we're either gonna recognize there's an anomaly um, or that, that an insider threat is taking place in real yeah. time. And that's the biggest thing is that we're, we have visibility real time. That's the biggest thing from a foundational operation, getting visibility, knowing your baseline, and knowing what's going to be forecasted for to, to recognize what's going to go out of that baseline is paramount to any successful security operation. So that's how we're able to mitigate the insider threat. Um, and I'll pass that on to, you know, what your uh, methodologies approach are. From the yeah, and I can give you kind of a, a little bit of insight into how the, the UEPA threat protection engine works within the Envision Cloud Platform. Essentially, three three layered funnel. It all starts with activity monitoring. Say, for example, AWS, there's close to 2,000 activities that we track on a per tenant and per user level. So we create two different baselines, one that's sort of expected across the whole organization, but also on a per user level. All of those different activities are tracked, and when, they are, when their behavior surpasses those normal baselines, those normal thresholds, uh, they bubble up one of 17 different types of anomalies. Uh, we talked about excessive usage, excessive upload, excessive download, excessive account creation, deletion, excessive report generation, um, superhuman anomalies, people logging in from two disparate locations, anomalous locations like Tor networks. All of those, in sort of a boiled down approach, say maybe 100 million events when in an organization per month, maybe generate 1,000 to 2,000 anomalies. We don't really expect an organization to look at those anomalies on a day-to-day -day basis. You can pull them down to your SIM or your SOC orchestration tool and use them as another high fidelity feed, another indicator of compromise in your existing workflows. Pull in your IPS IDS, your endpoints, use that as another piece of information. Where we add a third layer here is the concept of threats. And this will bubble up one of three different threats, either a compromised account, an insider threat, or some type of privilege access threat. And this is where we've seen our own UEBA engine that takes into account moving baselines, holidays, times of 
times of the day, the department, the user, the expectations, correlates those anomalies across multiple cloud services, it, it bubbles up what really seem to be genuine threats. And from there, you know, if you had a thousand to two thousand anomalies, maybe you'd see maybe 10 to 20 genuine threats. And we feel those are very high fidelity hits, something someone should should get a notification on their phone basically immediately on and take a look at. And going back to what we talked about earlier in an earlier slide, uh, you know, talking about different departments, right? HR is not going to not going to access a resource in the cloud. They're not a technical department, right? So, I mean, you have your user classification yeah. on tied into that, and essentially, you know, you, you know your departments, you know your users. You can tie in custom anom uh, excuse me anomalies. That's just a hard word to say sometimes. Mm -hmm. To basically, you know, tailor in to what your insider threat's going to be, and then be able to forecast and say, if we're going to get hit here with this user, it's not going to be as bad as, you know, the privileged user that has access to pretty much, you know, the keys to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. But we, even that person with the keys of the kingdom, we have a lookout point to watch that person to make sure that that person doesn't become a tyrant within our organization. So that's basically how we tailored it. Great and. That kind of leads into a question that I saw, so I want to jump right to that question. Uh, and the question is, how easy is it to see things like base configuration or even configuration changes in your environment? Well, it's very easy, actually. I mean, we're able to see it directly from the tile, uh, you know, from the direct dashboard. You can custom make your widgets to what you want to see with in your environment. Um, so if you want to see any type of configuration changes, you can put that directly on your dashboard and have it running through your sock on a rotation, uh, you know, or your in, or actually you can inform your MSSP if you need to. I mean, mm -hmm. whatever you want to do to basically say, hey, you know, that's the that's the best thing about Envision is that you can customize it to what your needs are. My needs are not going to be the same needs as uh, a financial industry. You know, I mean, we're regulated both heavily, but I mean, it may not be the same as manufacturing, right? It's going to be different type of configurations and visibility that they need. And that's the biggest, greatest thing about Envision is that I'm able to customize what I see, what I want, tune out the noise of what I don't need to know about. And that way I'm able to drill down and I'm not fatigued by false positives. Um, and so anything type of configuration, I can click, click about three to four clicks. I know the misconfiguration that's exactly it's in plain text, shoot that over, you know, whatever uh, chat that you're using to, to reach out to your dev or whoever that is, uh, whether you're on, you know, Slack or whatever it may be, and then say, hey, you missed this configuration, let's go ahead and get that going. If you need to spin up a, an ECAB, right, an emergency change control to do it, let's do it. Um, or is there a purpose that you did this for and what's our risk appetite? It encompasses all that. Yeah. So. Great. And then with uh, with a solution like that, how often uh, do you baseline? Is there a, a guideline for how often to baseline? I can take that one because sure. I've, I've seen this across multiple organizations. When a company first starts to baseline, they, they'll usually stick with the, the kind of standard 24-hour polling period because they've got to get a sense of what's already out there, how people are doing business. And then, um, you know, to Maka's point, you can start to prioritize which checks are important to you, to your company, to your organization, bubble up those up into low or medium or high severity configuration checks. And then from there, get into a, a close to five minute interval or basically five minute interval where if something in a high severity check comes back um, incorrect, have that automatically resolved. And I want right. to interject on, on one portion of that because some competitors may say, why do you need to gather a baseline? You can hit it hard out of the box, with the, out of the gateway with our solution, et cetera, right? Well, that's going to create business disruption, okay? <laughs> so anybody, any solution or competitor that comes to you and says, well, I can get this without a baseline, believe me, something's going to break and you're going to get that 3 a.m. phone call and you don't, don't want that. So it's always good to gather a baseline, just to be clear, from a security perspective, operationally and business-wise. We're here to make money. We're here to get a profit. That's just the cow, you know, the American way. So, yeah, yeah. So, and that's a hundred percent true, right? You can't really do business without understanding the baseline, what came before, because you don't necessarily know where someone is in a cloud journey, uh, the way that their applications work. But I think if you can get that baseline and establish uh, that way of working, yeah, that makes total sense to me as well. So. That is the extent of the questions that we have at this point. Uh, but I'd like to, uh, I'm not letting you guys off the hook just yet. 
uh, I'd like for you guys to have just a, just a closing statement and, and just uh, something that you would want to impart to the rest of the people that are here. All right, well, I'll start it off. Um, I mean, just to in incorporate everything we've talked about here today, I know we've shoved a lot out there um, in cyberspace, but I mean, essentially, Envision is a, I'm, this isn't biased, this is, it's been a great resource for us. Um, we're building a next gen SOC right now, and uh, it, it, this is basically one of the biggest uh, solutions in our portfolio. Moving forward, you know, like I said, everybody's going to end up in the cloud. It's just the way it's going to be. You're either going to go with AWS or a competitor. And uh, there's only a couple other options out there and, that are pretty abysmal, in my opinion. <laughs> That's a little biased. That was, that, was a, that was a nice shot, though. But what I'm saying is, is that basically what you want to go, you're going to end up in the cloud. You're going to need a CASB. There's just no way around it. And um, it's the 21st century. You're going for speed, scale, uh, you know, all the agility, all the buzzwords that we've thrown out today. Uh, if you're doing business, especially, you know, direct to consumer, whatever it is, you're, you're basically going to adopt those these types of models, right? You're going to want to make sure whether it's, Healthcare information, whether it's financial information, one of the two is going to encompass that you're going to have to deal uh, in business, and that's just the way it goes. So, if if any, if I can recommend that you guys give them a shot, I've been very. I mean, I was a skeptic. I started off as a skeptic. I was like, there's no way that it, you know, API uh, heavy driven solution is going to be where we need to go and I was completely wrong and I'm glad I was wrong. I learned a, bit, a lot about it because working from the outside in allowed us visibility from what's out there and we're able to integrate so seamlessly with everybody with our, our portfolio, right? Because a lot of people out there are like hesitant because there's their portfolio, their security solutions portfolio is so a, array, so big, they're like last thing they want to do is something that, you know, requires manual labor, right? Mm -hmm. And um, this doesn't require that much, you know, this isn't like a solution where it's, you know, it's heavy lifting, you know, it's, it was really easy to implement. It was really easy to gather that baseline. It was, it's been, you know, I'm not saying, you know, you're not, there's not going to be any work involved. There's always going to be work involved, but it's not as extensive as you may, as it may seem. Uh, it's been, you can tackle it. You can tackle it. It becomes and that's, manageable. It becomes manageable. It be, you, you, you can identify it very easily um, because even if you're shifting and lifting towards the cloud, you may not, you may, you're just throwing stuff in there because essentially, you know, you get so used to it that you're like, oh, wait a second, what's in there, right? So Envision comes and gives you that visibility. And it's really easy from a security standpoint, development standpoint, and an operational standpoint, which encompasses any business here in America. You actually get you know more bang for your buck and an ROI that's extensive right out of the box. Yeah. And that's been the biggest, quickest win for us, especially from you know a C-level, from a top-down approach. That's what you want. When you make an investment into a CASB, you're going to get the ROI, you know, tenfold of what you invested into it for. And that's the biggest uh, win that we've been able to come across with Envision. So with that said, I'll pass the torch. But I hope all of you enjoyed this. I've enjoyed it. It's been a great experience. So thank you, AWS, McAfee, and on behalf of Pig7 Dental Services. If you ever need any work done, we'll make that smile brighter for you. Yeah. Come on down. Come and see us. So first of all, thank you, Maka, very much. Thank you. Um, sharing insights. Yeah, thank you, absolutely. Excellent. Yeah. Um, you know, it, what, this is probably going to come off as like a yeah, duh type answer to half of you, and the other people are going to probably scratch their head on this. If I can impart any advice, I would say go get your AWS Associate Certificate. Yeah. Is a security professional, if you're, if, you're, if you're trying to still understand why so many people are so excited about this move, and why they're you know willing to shed security to do it? Go 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 take a look. Log in there, get your AWS certificate, and you'll be shocked at just the the business, the capability that a business has now in terms of being agile, being quick, uh, bringing new features to market, and that's going to give you insights as a security professional to have to have conversations that draw the right line of what I think you said it um, risk appetite, yeah. right? Because it's it's no longer hard line controls. We don't have those options anymore. And so to draw that line of a risk, uh, business enabled with risk exposure um, is something you can really do if you have a good understanding of, uh, of what the business is trying to accomplish with, with AWS, for example. And if you want to uh, make sure your, S, your, your pearly S3 buckets don't have any cavities in them, you know, we've got a DLP engine for that too. That's right.
IT hygiene. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice, guys. And, and again, uh, thank you, Ben, and thank you, Maka, for uh, being here and being the, the live uh, panel uh, and sharing your insights and experience. Uh, at AWS, we always uh, focus on the customer, and for Pacific Dental in particular, uh, it is really good to hear uh, the things that you're able to iterate on, how it's enabled your business, uh, and how you're using these AWS services, uh, as well as the partner solutions with McAfee to accelerate what you're doing, so fantastic. Um, and on that note, we're going to wrap up today's webinar. Uh, as a reminder to the folks that are on the, the line, we are going to send out an email shortly with the recording of today's webinar. And we thank you very much for attending. And as always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you.